the big day when you finally meet your little baby is getting closer and closer. And now all you want to know is, am I dilating? And if so, how much am I dilated? This video will help you find out. Yes. So first we're going to share with you the four most important cervix dilation symptoms to give you an idea about how it looks and feels like when your cervix is dilating. And then we're also going to show you two methods which allow you to actually check yourself if you're dilating. Yes. In fact, these two methods can even give you a rough idea about how much your cervix has dilated. Right. This is Natalie, a pregnancy and birth consultant and TCM therapist. And that's Matthias, a researcher and science geek. And we love helping mummies and their babies naturally and science-based. For more useful tips and tools on pregnancy and baby-related topics, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell if you like. Okay, so first on our list of cervix dilation symptoms are lightning crotches. Lightning crotches are often described as a sharp or shooting pain, which a woman may feel in her pelvis, in her rectum or in her vagina. Now, very often that sort of pain is described as cervix dilation pain. However, what it really is, is that your baby's head has descended so deep into your pelvis that baby puts pressure on ligaments and nerves. And that causes these flashes of pain, right? Nevertheless, at that stage of your pregnancy, when you feel these lightning crotches, the pressure on your cervix will be quite strong. And because of that strong pressure, chances are that your cervix is indeed dilating when you feel these lightning crotches. Right. Next on our list of cervical dilation symptoms is mucus plaque discharge. The mucus plaque is a thick jelly-like substance that is blocking the cervix during your pregnancy so that no bacteria can enter the uterus. But once the cervix has thinned out and starts dilating, you're going to lose the mucus plaque. Yeah. And so if you lose your mucus plaque, chances are that your cervix has softened and that it is now beginning to dilate. Right. Next on our list of cervix dilation symptoms is what is called bloody show. Now, I really don't know who comes up with such terrible names. Maybe they have a Stephen King, I don't know, because <laughs> when I hear bloody show, I expect like the amount of blood equivalent to the amount of blood in some zombie movie, right? Oh my God. However, that's absolutely <laughs> not the case. So what happens is that as your cervix starts to dilate, small capillaries are burst, which obviously causes a bit of bleeding, right? Therefore, you're most likely going to see some light bloody discharge. So why not call it, I don't know, Hardly bloody discharge. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's much better. <laughs> Hardly bloody discharge. Anyways, now very often this happens together with the mucus plaque discharge, which may color the mucus brown or pink. Yeah. And that hardly bloody discharge, if yeah, you like, exactly. <laughs> can be a sign of cervical dilation. However, we are not talking about vaginal bleeding, okay? So if your discharge is red or even bright red, and if it indeed looks like a bloody show, then please seek medical advice from your doctor, okay? You know, just to be on the safe side. Please stop saying bloody show. <laughs> Anyways, the next and final cervix dilation symptom is cramping. Many women report that they feel a cramping kind of pain just above their pubic bone. So this can be another sign that your cervix is dilating. Right. So as you can see, the things that you're most likely going to feel are not so much because of the cervical dilation itself, but rather because of the many things that come with cervical dilation. Yeah. And as you can also see, it is not that simple to conclude from cervical dilation symptoms that your cervix is indeed dilating. Yeah. And because of that, we want to show you two methods which can help you find out if your cervix is indeed dilating. Mm -hmm. Plus, they can even give you a rough idea about how much your cervix has dilated already. Yes. So the first approach is called the purple line. Now listen, we are very aware that what we are about to tell you sounds like some myth that grandmas told each other like 500 <laughs> years ago, right? However, this method is actually backed by scientific studies. Right. We'll link to those studies in the description below this video. Yes. So basically, when a woman is dilating, she may develop a purple or brownish line, 
which extends from her anus upwards to the top of the cleft between her buttocks. No, this is not a joke. No. <laughs> in fact, it happens in about 75% of all women. Yeah. And that line can even tell you approximately how much your cervix is dilated. Right. Keep in mind though that if you are being induced, then you're most likely not going to see the purple line. However, in that case, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you are at the hospital anyways, where they can check your cervical dilation. Right. Now, unfortunately, we cannot really show you pictures of the purple line here because YouTube wouldn't like that so much. <laughs> but we have this illustration for you, which we hope is somewhat useful. So again, the purple line extends from the anus to the top of the cleft between your buttocks. Therefore, you would see the line close to your anus first and then extending upwards. So what does the line tell us? Well, first of all, if you can see the line, then it's good news because that means that your cervix is dilating. Right. And then if you want to get a rough idea how much you have dilated already, then you need to measure the length of that mm -hmm. line. So maybe a partner or your friend can help you with that. Right. Now, many midwives and doulas will tell you that, for example, if your purple line is one centimeter long, then you are one centimeter dilated. And if your line is, say, five centimeters long, you will be five centimeters dilated, etc. Unfortunately, that is not the case because the two numbers are not perfectly correlated. Instead, one clinical study came up with this table. And what this table tells us is how much the women of that study were dilated when they developed a purple line of a specific length. So, for example, when the women of that study were between 3 and 6 cm dilated, then on average the purple line was 7.8 cm long. So, given that this study is really representative, then it would be so that if your own purple line is about 5 cm long, then it is likely that your cervix is about 1 to 2 cm dilated. If your purple line is close to 8 cm long, it is likely that your cervix is between 3 and 6 cm dilated. And then from there, it's like the further your cervix dilates, the more the two numbers will match. Again, you will only get a rough idea about how much you are dilated, but it is far from being accurate. The reason why we still wanted to share this information with you is because one thing that the purple line can tell us reliably is if you are dilating at all. Yeah. And we think that that information alone definitely makes it worth to be mentioned, right? Yeah. By the way, you can find both the table that you just saw and a more detailed explanation on our website. Link can be found in the description below this video. Yes. Now, since the purple line is only visible in about 75% of all women, we wanted to show you another approach to help you find out if and how much you are dilating. We call it the fundus theory. Yes, but before we explain the fundus theory, if you're liking this video so far, we would be super grateful if you could leave us a comment in the comment section below. Or simply subscribe to our channel and or like this video so that we know that you have found it helpful. Any feedback is more than appreciated. Thanks so much. Okay, so back to the fundus theory. Yes. So first of all, unlike the purple line, the fundus theory is not science-based, yeah. okay? It is something that I learned from midwives. Nevertheless, this approach can be surprisingly accurate. Right. So in very simple terms, your fundus is the top of your uterus, which you can feel better and better as your pregnancy progresses. So in the picture that you see right now, you can see where approximately we would expect to see the fundus in week 12, 18, 24, etc. What you can also see is that the line at week 40 is lower than at week 36. Now that is because at week 40 your baby has dropped, i.e. your baby has descended into your pelvis. And accordingly the fundus descends too. But when you have a contraction, the level of the fundus rises again. And the reason for that is the muscle of your uterus. Before labor, that muscle surrounds the uterus, so it is more or less equally thick on all sides, right? However, as you are dilating, that muscle bulges at the top of the uterus. Therefore, the fundus rises. Right. So here is what you need to do. At the beginning of labor and during a contraction, check how many fingers fit between your fundus and your bra line. And keep in mind, the fundus is simply the bump of your little one, okay? Now, at the beginning of labor, you should still be able to fit all five fingers of your hand between the fundus and the bra line. Right. 
However, what's going to happen is that as your contractions become more intense, more regular and last longer, you will be able to fit fewer and fewer fingers because the level of the fundus will rise even further. So how is this related to cervix dilation and how do you know how much you have dilated? Well, you see the rising fundus goes hand in hand with your cervical dilation. So the moment when you can only fit three fingers, it is likely that you are about five centimeters dilated. Mm -hmm. In fact, when Natalie was in labor, the accuracy of the three finger rule was like to a T. <laughs> so the moment when Natalie could only fit three fingers, her midwife did a vaginal exam and she confirmed it. Natalie was five centimeters dilated, spot on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then once you can only fit one finger, well, then it's likely that you're fully dilated. So you might want to consider going to the hospital way before that. Yeah. Now again, this method is completely unscientific and we also don't know how accurate the fundus theory will be in your particular case. Maybe for you three fingers are more likely something like four or six centimeters of cervical elation. However, we know that this method has worked for a lot of women and so we believe that it can certainly be helpful if you want to know if you are dilating. Plus, it can certainly give you at least a rough idea about where you are in terms of your cervical dilation. Exactly. And by the way, if you're not dilating fast enough, check out our video about how to dilate faster that you can now see at the top of your screen. Right. And if your contractions have started already, check out our other video about how to dilate faster once contractions have started. You can now see it at the top of your video screen. In any case, we really hope that you found this video helpful. Yeah. And we also hope that we could help you get one step closer to meeting your little right. one. Thanks so much for watching. And if you have liked this video, please leave us a like or even a comment. Any feedback is more than appreciated. Yeah. And for more useful tips and tools on pregnancy and baby related topics, make sure to subscribe to our channel and to hit the bell.